Hello, I'm Susan Gordon, Chair of the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors, and thanks for viewing this morning uh, for five questions with Susan. This morning, I have the pleasure and the honor of interviewing Al Alma Magillon, who is the Vice President of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Alma, thank you so much for joining us today. So, here's your first question. Let's talk about local business today and the resilience that they are showing in the face of this pandemic. How are our local Latinx businesses adopting and adapting to the new restrictions imposed by the state? First you're closed, then you're open, and then you're closed. And how are they being impacted? Yes, well, first off, thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And yes, our businesses have continuously have to adapt whether it's the requirements to reopen their business or to remain open. And this is really where we have seen the importance of having the boots on the ground approach and being able to go out there and present the protocols to our businesses. One of the challenges that we have seen is of course, how do we work through the digital divide? And that's certainly where our chamber has come into place where we've worked very hard to go to the EDB website, go to the county website, print out information on the protocols and all the ordinances and deliver them directly into the hands of our business owners. So certainly that has been a challenge for both the businesses and for our chambers, but we've been able to work through it. Another big challenge that I've seen has been access to funding. So whether it's federal funds when it came to the PPP loans, um, some of our businesses were simply not eligible for these funds or they were eligible, but perhaps they were not prepared with their financials to then apply. And as we know, those funds went through fairly quickly. Also, when it comes to grants, one of the things that we have seen, and I really want to voice the concerns of our business owners, that grants should not be on a first come, first serve basis. We really need to focus on how, as opportunities come up to apply for grants, that we truly get those into the hands of our business owners that need them. So really a call out to our county and to our supervisors that when these opportunities come up, that we really look at it through the lens of equity and really get it to the hands of the business owners that truly financially need it to keep their doors open. And lastly, I think as every other business owner, access to PPP is still a challenge for some. We know that some of our small business owners do not have a direct supplier, so they rely on purchasing these items just like a regular consumer, which typically means a race to the grocery store to get that. So really trying to get creative on how we continue to provide these resources to our businesses has been a, one of our top priorities, certainly with our chamber. Absolutely. Adaptation is the key word, flexibility, uh, being nimble. Can you share some examples of businesses that have adapted to thrive even through the difficulties of this pandemic? Yes, certainly. Keyword adaptation, right? And getting creative. So I think a prime example that I can share with you today is our chamber member, uh, Taqueria Solasteca, who's here in Roner Park. One of the things that I've seen with this business is that even during these difficult times, their ability to get creative and add menu items. So simple things that are cost effective, such as elotes and mangonadas. And that just creates a new foot traffic into their business and invites existing customers to come back. So sometimes it can take us something as simple as getting creative with your menu. Um, another thing that we've seen with businesses such as Paradise Sushi who launched their online platform. So having the ability to now place an order online and going online is huge. So certainly we've seen them have huge success in that regards and really just pushes us to then support our smaller local businesses in understanding the importance of going with online marketing and how do you do that? So certainly looking at how we can partner to provide some additional resources with that aspect as well. Excellent examples. Uh, so businesses are required to implement mitigation practices to keep the customers and their employees safe. What does that look like? It looks like a lot of different things. <laughs> so definitely as we've been out visiting our businesses, even from the start of the pandemic, from going out to businesses and helping them measure six feet apart for their customers to stand in line and pay, um, partnering with the county and getting the signage that they need both in Spanish and English so they can display that in their front stores, 
and signage in regards to the importance of wearing a mask and the importance of keeping that social distance everything to making sure that they have hand sanitizer available to both their consumers and their employees. In our outreach efforts, one of the things that we've certainly have focused and had conversations with our business owners is that we're here to provide the resources to keep themselves safe, to keep their employees safe, but also to keep their consumers safe because it's going to take that commitment on everybody's part to really get us through this. And it's been amazing to see their buy-in and the fact that they want to do the right things. And that's where that partnership comes into place. Thank you. So why is it important for our community to support our local businesses as much as they can right now? Yes, of course. Our local businesses are community members. They're our neighbors, they're our friends, and they really truly need our support right now. Uh, one of the things that I'm truly thankful at working for a nonprofit, and I'm sure that I share this with many of my other nonprofit colleagues, is that the time that we have a fundraiser or that we have an event, it's our local businesses that we turn to for support and sponsorship. So it's that mutual relationship that we have to help each other out. So certainly I encourage everyone to support our local businesses. We started a campaign back in 2017 during the fires um, called Consume Local. And really just a reminder to our community of the importance of shopping local and what that means. So certainly we kept that campaign going. And right now it's more important more than ever right now. Absolutely. So where are you seeing examples of collaboration between businesses and even industries to empower and support our local business orders, owners? Of course, I'm a huge believer in the power behind partnership, and I strongly feel that when we work together, our voice becomes that much stronger and that much louder. Um, one example that I do want to share with you today is a very admirable example with business owner of Juncture Tap Room, who is Peter Lopez. He took his $1,200 stimulus check and created a GoFundMe to turn around and help other small businesses such as himself, and the small Paint It Forward Act has now become a nonprofit organization and he's getting ready to disperse seven grants along with PPP, PPP kits to these local businesses. And I think it's just very exciting to see something so small created into something so big and really just a reminder to the community that when you participate in these type of campaigns, even if it's $10 or $20, you're really helping a greater cause. So for the love of Rosa is a definitely one example that I can show with you. And then with our chamber, I just want to share a little bit about who we have been able to work with and has really helped us get the message across to our businesses is that we are thankful to organizations such as North Bay Rebuild, who through their assistance, we were able to partner with Poder de Saber, which is an online talk show via Facebook. And this platform has allowed us to then bring resources and updates to our business community. And we've been able to partner with individuals such as Alma Bowen from Nuestra Comunidad, who has joined the show and, and offered her assistance with the Listos program. Um, other organizations that have joined us on the show has been Mara Ventura with North Bay Jobs with Justice and talked about the importance of the paid sick leave ordinance. And also thanks to North Bay Jobs with Justice, we've been able to distribute masks because they were able to give us a donation and we've included that in our outreach work. But definitely thankful to all of our partners, including your district aide, Karina, who when we were out in the Springs area, she joined our efforts to visit business owners when we were in Petaluma, business owner Juan Gutierrez from Quinoa joined us and he visited businesses. When we were in the Rona Park area, we had Latino Alliance join us in these efforts. And that's what it's all about. It's having small organizations work together because at the end of the day, we all want our businesses to be successful. We all want to get through this. So partnerships is a huge thing for us. Olma, thank you so much for telling us uh, a little bit about the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and the great work that you are doing around the county. I'm so we have a very large county, so it's pretty amazing you that you and everyone else can get out to the far reaches. And we're so grateful to many of our county employees and certainly community organizations for being a part of that collaborative effort. So thank you so much for your time and hard work, Alma. Thanks to our residents for tuning in today. For more information about COVID-19, please visit socoemergency.org 
or call our information hotline at 211. See you next time.